Welcome to our church service again this morning as we, just a reminder, we continue to be online this week. For the next four weeks, this one and three more, then after Labor Day, hopefully on the 13th of September, we'll be back in person again uh, as we had so many diverse sicknesses and things going on in the church that we decided to take a little break from our in-person services. So, <coughs> But I explained all that last week, so I won't go into it again, but uh, let's do remember all the prayer requests that have been mentioned, so many that we have within the church that are sick with various things that are dealing with with struggles and tribulations and sickness and, and all kinds of things. So let's just remember each of those in prayer. Let's, let's ex- exalt and lift one another up to the Lord and let the Lord take care of this situation. Uh, also, let's uh, say a special, special prayer this week for... Uh, our <clears throat> our church, uh, let's say a special prayer, especially for our teachers and students as they are going to start back school this week. Let's, let's uh, lift them up to the Lord and let the Lord protect them and surround them uh, with his protection um, and pray that the Lord will bless as we start back this school year for our teachers and students. And, and let's pray that this coronavirus will get over soon, that they will find a vaccine or something that the Lord will provide that will get us back into a sense of normalcy uh, <clears throat> as we go through these situations. But that's one of the things that we want to talk about this morning as we get into the message. Um, <clears throat> we We do tend to focus on the difficult times. We tend to focus on the difficult situations in our lives, and we tend to be more of a negative people and not a positive people. We we tend to get so wrapped up in the difficulties that we face, not only in our, our normal life, but in our, our Christian walk with God, with our Christian life with God, the persecutions that we face in today's society, as society holds us up and, and says that, you know, we need to catch up with the times, that the Bible is outdated, that there are so many different problems and struggles and trials in, in the world and <clears throat> that we don't fit into those, that we are uh, overrated and outdated. And, and this is not true. We know that the Word of God stands true forever. Uh, he even tells us that His Word is everlasting. And so we need to see and understand that we are going to face difficult times in our lives. God did not tell us that we were exempt from troubles and trials in life and that we would struggle through. We will suffer loss. We will suffer pain. We will suffer through this life. But that important little three-letter word, but, but God has blessings. God has great benefits that come with serving Him and that's what we need to remember. I, I understand that it's important for us to to separate and realize that you and I are going to live through difficult situations in life. We're going to have difficult times. We're going to struggle through difficult situations in our life. We're going to suffer, suffer through uh, just agonizing loss in our lives. Um, <clears throat> but God knows best, and we all have to suffer in this life because of sin. I'm not talking about your sin in general, although there are chastisements for our sins. I'm not talking about that. Uh, what I'm focusing on is God did not bring death into the world. Man did when he sinned. God didn't bring disease and sickness into the world. Man did when we sinned. And the Bible is very explicit in telling us that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we will suffer and we will be persecuted and we will live through difficult times. This is true. But never forget that God gives us glorious benefits. Now, if you have your Bible and will, I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalms, the 103rd Psalm. Now, in this 103rd Psalm, in the few verses that we're going to read here, God shows us that we are not to forget our benefits. David, as he wrote this psalm, reminds us not to forget the benefits that God has given because these are great and glorious benefits. Now, we're going to dive into this, and I'm going to try to go through this quickly, not keep you too long this morning. But <clears throat> but what 
what I want you to see is there's seven things that he points out in here. And let's go ahead and start reading in the 103rd Psalm. Let's just start in verse number 1. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And we know the word holy means to be set apart or separated, this glorious separate name that is above all names. Now, verse 2 through 6 is the verses that I want you to pay particular attention to when he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Then here are the benefits that he gives us. Who forgiveth all their iniquities, who healeth thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who converteth thee with loving kindness and with tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Now, in these (coughs) few verses in 2 through 6, He gives us seven things that he has blessed us with. And I want us to take pay particular attention and look at each one of these as we come down through them and and see that these are benefits from God. These are blessings from God. When we go out and get a job, one of the things that we look for is we look for a full-time job so that we have work all the time. And we look for what kind of benefits the company can provide us, whether these benefits are vacation time, uh, sick time, the insurance they provide, how good is the insurance they provide, how good are the benefits that come with working at this place. Now, <clears throat> we all look for that, but what we don't always realize is that God has blessed you and I with these glorious benefits, and David has reminded us, don't forget the benefits that come with believing in God. Don't forget the benefits that come with being a child of God. These are glorious benefits. And even though we may struggle in life and we may struggle and be persecuted in our Christian walk, these are benefits that God gives us that we need to remind ourselves every day. Always be positive. God expects us to be positive all the time. God expects his children to not get downtrodden, not to get overloaded with worry, not to get overloaded with fear and anguish because these are weights that drag us down spiritually. They affect our relationship with God and we can't let these things creep in. And the only way to not let these things creep in is to remember the benefits that God gives us. D.L. Moody had a great quote that I've used before and I will use again. He says, a positive thought is the seed to a positive result. So if we think positive, then positive things will happen. I'm not going to say that if you continually think positive that your life is going to be perfect and good and without any troubles because that would be a lie. That's not what the Word of God teaches. The Word of God teaches us that we are going to have difficult times. But during those difficult times, when we enter in those storms of life, that God has the power to lift us up out of those storms. God has the power to calm those storms. God has the power to help us overcome. He gives us strength. As we preached a couple of weeks ago, the message, I can, I can do all things through Christ. Why? Because Christ gives me strength through Christ which strengthens me. That's what we need to see. That's what we need to understand. That's what we need to focus on are these glorious benefits. So every time you get downhearted or you get a little bit discouraged, then use this for encouragement. Come back to this psalm and remember that you have benefits, not just good benefits, but great benefits from God. The first one that he points out to us in this is that he forgives your sins. <clears throat> now, we need to remember that God teaches us through His Word that when He forgives, it's done. It's over. It's cast behind His back to never be remembered again. He casts it so far away that He can't see it anymore. <clears throat> we need to understand that we are forgiven. Now, that is a blessing in itself, and we could stop right there in the message right here, and that's enough. That is enough for us to be reminded that whatever you do, Christ has the power. Christ has 
already paid the debt. He has shown you His love. He has shown you His grace. He has shown you His mercy, compassion. Every word that we can think of through the Word of God that is positive, we can take it right here and wrap it up in this one word. You are forgiven. You are forgiven because He loved you. He came into the world because He loved you. He went and gave His life because He loved you. He took His life up again and He went to heaven to prepare us a place because He loved you. All of this, this forgiveness is a result of His love. Now, that's enough. But what we need to be reminded here when we think about that is that God cares so much about you that He was willing to pay your debt, take on your load, carry your burden. Remember what Jesus Christ said Himself. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, all of you that have problems, all of you that have troubles, all of you that have struggles, all of you who are dealing with bad things, come to me. And he said, I will give you rest. <clears throat> All right. So what we need to see and understand is that he loves us enough that he forgave us. He has forgiven us our sins. You and I are debt free before God. We owe him nothing, although we know we know that we owe him everything because of his salvation. But in the eyes of God, we've been studying in the book of Romans, and we've been focused a lot here lately on the word justification, which means to be found not guilty. We are not guilty before God because he has forgiven us our sins. As I said, we could end the message right here, and that would be good enough. All you need to do is remind yourself every time that you mess up, Every time that you stumble, every time that you fall, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. And and we need to just thank God for that. Now, this is for believers, okay? For unbelievers, your forgiveness comes when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, when you know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is real, that he died for your sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. When you believe that, and as I, I, I want to just use this real quickly while we're talking about forgiven. I used this in our Bible study on Wednesday night, just this past Wednesday night, in our Bible study, and, and I want to share it with all of you again. I want you to see and understand what we're talking about. There's a huge difference in believing in God or believing in Jesus Christ and believing Jesus Christ. Okay, Believing in Him, the world believes in Him. They believe there's a God. But when you believe Him, then you prove you have faith because you trust Him and you follow Him. That's the difference. There's a huge difference. There's an eternal difference in that. And that's what we need to see. The great benefit of God is that we are forgiven. Another great benefit, the second great benefit he talks about is he heals your diseases. Now, does this mean that every time that we get sick that God's going to heal every one of us? No. I have said myself that when my mother got cancer, I prayed daily for her healing. Well, the Lord did not heal her cancer, but he gave her the greatest healing in the world. He took her home. Okay, We know that we had multitudes and multitudes of people who were praying for little Tucker Carpenter, and we prayed that the Lord would heal him, and it didn't happen with the healing that we expected. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you that God is going to heal every disease, and some people will tell you that, well, if your faith is good enough, then he will heal and he will do everything. But what God teaches us is that his will is perfect, that our blessings, our blessings in the church in the age of grace are heavenly blessings, okay? <clears throat> They're heavenly blessings. He got the greatest blessing in the world. God took him home and made him a part of his family. And those of us that are saved by God's grace will see all our loved ones who were saved again, and that we will see these people. Okay, so I'm not going to stand here and be foolish enough to tell you that God is going to heal every disease and everything. But the disease that we're talking about, we're talking about a spiritual disease, this disease of sin, this disease that separates us from God, because that's what sin does. Sin is a wall between us and God. God does not expect us as his children to build walls between each other, but to build bridges to get across. 
And God has built us a bridge through his salvation. He has torn that wall of sin down. He has destroyed that disease in our lives. And <clears throat> as we find in uh, 1 Corinthians 10:13, that he said there's no temptation, and I'm going to paraphrase this verse, but there's no temptation that you will face that God does not provide you a way out of. So if you give in to temptation, as the book of James tells us in James chapter 1, that when you give in to lust, it's because you give in to your own lusts and your own desire. And then when sin is conceived, when it is born, then that brings forth death. Okay, so we have to put to death that old man, put on the new, and grow in him. So the disease that is being healed is this disease of sin, the di disease that separates us spiritually from God. That's the benefit that you have from being a believer. That's the benefits that we have. I'm not saying that God won't heal sickness because that would be foolish too. Because we have all had miracles within our own families, within our own church, within people that we know. We see miracles from God every day. And I'm not saying that God doesn't perform miracles because I know he does. But I'm telling you that the disease that has been destroyed is sin. That's the greatest disease, that uh, destruction that there will ever be. And then the third thing that he tells us <clears throat> is that he redeems your life from destruction. Now, I've used this word, and we've talked about this also in our Bible study a lot here lately, the word redemption, and what it is to be redeemed. When you're redeemed, you are, you are bought with a price and then set free. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did with us. He bought us. He paid the debt so you didn't have to pay the debt. He saved you from a devil's hell. And this is something that we should always be excited about, knowing that he has paid the price so we didn't have to. He found us not guilty so that we didn't have to stand before the white throne judgment and be separated for God eternally. Jesus Christ has given us a way, and he paid the price. He forgave your debt. He did everything that needed to be done, which takes us back to that glorious forgiveness. You see, you are redeemed. You are bought. And once you were bought and paid for it, once Jesus Christ paid that debt on Calvary's hill, when he paid that debt on the cross, when he paid for your sins so you didn't have to, we deserve to pay for our own sins, but Jesus Christ paid for them for us. And when he paid for that sin, then he also made you free. The truth shall set you free. And you shall be free indeed. Jesus Christ said those words himself. Okay? This is the truth that you have been bought with a price. Jesus Christ has already paid your debt. All you have to do is accept that payoff. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Once you do that, then your life will not be destroyed. You will not face judgment. You will only face reward. God has given us that glorious hope, that glorious promise. This is a benefit from God a true benefit from God. You will not be destroyed in a devil's hell, but you will live eternally in the presence of God because you are redeemed. The fourth thing that he teaches us here <clears throat> is that he crowns you with grace and mercy. Now, what does it mean when he says crowns you? If you are crowned, this is, this is something that brings great honor to you it's just like a perfect example paul in his writings uses a lot of times the terms of uh running a race or or <coughs> uh, he uses reference to the olympic games that were in rome at this time um and he uses for that now you know what their reward was when they ran they got a wreath a wreath that faded away but it was very important to them to win a race. Our athletes today who get into the Olympics, they they strive for a gold medal to reach that medal. That's what God is saying to us, that he is giving you this place of honor, okay? And by this, he crowns you with grace, undeserved kindness, and mercy, okay? Tender, loving mercies. That's what God gives us. That's what God has done for us. All right? He has made you honorable before him. You have been set apart. You've been set aside. You have been given this glorious benefit. You have been crowned with mercy and grace. The fifth thing that he tells us 
is that <clears throat> he satisfies you with good things. He satisfies you with good things. He fills you. It's not just he gives you a nibble or he gives you enough to satisfy you for a little while. He satisfies you with good things. You are full. You are no longer hungry. You are satisfied with the result. You have things that come into your life. God brings plenty of good things in our life. We just don't always see them. We don't always see the great things that God gives us. We don't look around and see the glorious things of our family. We don't look around and see the blessings that we have around us. We don't look and see the greatness of nature that God has given. We don't see all these glorious things anymore because we fail to look. We fail to be satisfied with what we have. We are continually striving to have more. We want more money at work. We want more things in our house. We want more material things. We want all these things in our life instead of being satisfied. <clears throat> the Bible teaches us in Galatians that godliness with contentment is great gain. Paul even told us that whatever state he was in in life, good or bad, that he had learned with that state to be content, to be content with what he had. That's satisfied. He was full. He was filled. That was all that mattered. That's what we need to see. That's what we need to understand. Those are the things that we need to realize that true satisfaction only comes through Jesus Christ. True satisfaction can only be given by God. And, and not only does he satisfy us with some things, he satisfies us with good things. Okay, Look around and see the blessings you have. Take the time to realize the blessings that you have. The sixth thing that we see here is that he renews your strength. He renews your strength. Okay, now <clears throat> I want you to look at Psalm 40, I mean Isaiah, excuse me, Isaiah 40, verse 31. This is one of Brother Dale's favorite scriptures. He quotes this scripture a lot, and as soon as I started reading this verse, I thought about Brother Dale, I thought about this glorious scripture that, that he always is quoting, because this is what it is to be renewed, to restored, to restored just like new, to give you that new creation, that new beginning. You have started over. Now, Isaiah forty thirty one. he says, uh, <clears throat> But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Isn't that a glorious verse? Isn't that glorious to know that God is going to give us the strength to get through whatever situation we're in? No matter where we're at or what we're going through, God gives us the strength to get through it. That's a benefit of God. That's a blessing of God. He said no matter how low you may think you are, no matter how low you think you've sunk in life, no matter how deep that pit is that you're in, no matter what emotions you're dealing with, no matter what sorrow, no matter what it is, God says, I'll give you the strength to get out of it. That's a glorious benefit. That's a blessing that only comes from God, and God's the only one that can do that. And then the last thing that he shows us, the seventh thing he shows us is that he executes righteousness and justice for the oppressed. He executes it. Okay? What he does is he makes this come to fullness. It's done completely. That's the best way. What is righteousness? Righteousness is simply doing the right thing. It's not any harder than that. The righteousness of God... And the justice of God, which is the fairness of God, is the right and fair thing to do. God knows best. God knows above all what none of us know. God knows the greatest things that you and I can ever accomplish in our life. And He leads us toward that task. He leads us in that direction. God has shown us that if we will live the right way, if we will do the right things, God is fair. He is just. All right. He is, as it tells us in uh, Romans 3, that He is the justifier. Okay. He is the one that makes it extremely fair for us in our lives. No matter how hard it gets in this world, 
we have hope because we have hope in Jesus Christ. We have hope in another life. You and I are not part of this world. We are separate from that world, from this world. Remember what John told us in 1 John. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And in Romans 8.31, Paul writes, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Think about these glorious verses. Think about what God has promised us. All right? God has given us faith, hope, and love. And he said the greatest of this is love because you can't believe in Jesus Christ if you don't love him. You can't have hope for tomorrow without Jesus Christ. Okay, It all boils back down to love. Jesus Christ proved his love to us, and he proves his love every day by giving us these benefits, these glorious benefits that you and I have. Think about how precious they are. Think about how great they are. And remember what he says up here in verse number 2. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, bless my soul. And forget not his benefits. Bless the Lord with all you have. And don't forget what he has given. Remember, every time you go through tough times, if you're going through them now, situations that you go through, remain positive because you have hope, because you're a child of God, because you're special. God has made you peculiar and zealous. And peculiar doesn't mean crazy. It means that he set you apart for another reason. Think about that. Use that. Let that grow in you to become more. Let it just resonate within your heart to help you that every time you go through a hard time, come back here and don't forget God's blessings. Don't forget the benefits that he's given you because they're not just good benefits. They're great benefits. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you this morning, God, thanking you for another glorious time that you've allowed us to spend together. Lord, we thank you for your marvelous word. We thank you for your your glory. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for these wonderful benefits that you've given us, God, how great they truly are. As great as you, Lord, as you've given us these things. Lord, help us to always bless and praise your holy name. Help us to lift you up. Help us to never forget, Lord. Let us always reflect on these glorious benefits, remembering, Lord, that you are always there, that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us. God, that you will always help us to grow and become more. Lord, let us always give you the praise, honor, and glory for everything that happens. Lord, we pray for your protection, for your guidance. We pray, God, that you will place the lost within our path so that we can be a witness. Lord, help us to always be workers for you, doing your will, fulfilling your will, doing the things that are necessary. And God, no matter what's done, we'll give you the honor and glory for it all because we know you are the Almighty. And we are so thankful for that. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen.